Those like don't have sex before marriage. They had a pregnancy class for the girls who were pregnant. We would literally look at pictures of like diseased genitalia. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio for about three years now. Those of you who have seen my video on dating differences already kind of know what today's video is gonna be all about because I touched on that topic in that video too. And I may repeat some of the things I said then, but this video is actually gonna be a lot more in depth and that's also why it'll be a lot longer than my videos usually are. If you'd like to skip parts off the video, feel free to do so with the time codes that I put in the description box below. Before we dive into this, I'd like to say that I am aware that this is a very sensitive topic and it's important for me to stress that I am not trying to offend anybody with this video, but even though I'm going to try and keep it as objective as possible, I do have an opinion on this topic that I probably won't be able to hide. I'd also like to say that I respect all opinions and I do encourage a civilized discussion and exchange of experiences in the comments below, but no insults, please. I've decided to make this video because it's interesting to me how two countries like Germany and the United States that have pretty similar backgrounds at first sight, like the same form of government, a similar culture, and even the same predominant religion, approach certain aspects of life so differently. And in regard to some topics, I think that Germany and the US could actually learn from each other. In other aspects, it may just be interesting to compare and discuss the reasons for the differences. So this is going to be a look at the sex education culture in the US from the perspective of a German millennial who went to high school and college in a big city in Germany and who was honestly kind of shocked to find out what kind of things some of my American friends were taught in the sex education classes here in the US. And I actually interviewed some of them on camera, so you'll hear some of their experiences later in this video. Let me start with what I was used to from growing up in Germany and what I thought was normal. So school curriculums vary within Germany, but sex education is a mandatory part of curriculums nationwide and has been for several decades. In former East Germany, they made it mandatory in 47, and in West Germany, they published a coherent course book on sex education in 69, and they made it a governmental duty by law in 92. Historically, the first state-sponsored sex education courses in Germany were introduced really early in the year 1900 in Prussia, so this was when Germany was still the German Empire. So since sex education is mandatory in Germany, the German federal constitutional court decided in 2004 that parents can't opt their kids out of sexual education classes for religious reasons because imparting objective information is neither in conflict with their religious freedom nor with the parents right of education. They also said that it would encourage the formation of a parallel society and the European Court of Human Rights made the same decision in 2011. So I think you can already tell how much weight is given to sex education in German schools and for me growing up in Germany there was that but then there's also the fact that Germans in general just tend to talk a lot more openly about sex related topics. In school I remember that we had sex education in fifth, sixth, and eighth grade. And in fifth grade, we went on sort of a field trip to a nearby youth center with external educators. And they separated boys and girls. And I remember that we learned all about how the menstrual cycle works, how pregnancy works, how to handle our periods when we first get them, how to use tampons and pads, and also what kind of contraception there is for when we'll have sex for the first time someday. We also got a little package with tampons and pads, an informational brochure, um, I think a menstrual cycle calendar, and a condom was in there as well. This actually took place in a very comfortable atmosphere. Nobody felt embarrassed, and I think that the kids actually asked questions too. And from what I heard, the boys learned about the menstrual cycle and pregnancy as well, but then they also talked about what they were about to experience, getting their first erection and all of that. In sixth grade, we then talked about the reproduction process in biology class, but it was mostly just limited to the plain facts. And then in eighth grade, we talked about it again 
men, but that time it was a little bit more about actually having sex. So we also talked about the different kinds of protection and contraception and how to use them. We talked about STDs and I believe that we talked about the different resources that we could use if we ever needed support with any of this. And we also talked about how abortions work and how an artificial insemination works. The curriculum describes this as providing guidance for a responsible approach to sexuality and honestly that's exactly what it felt like to me. Nobody tried to scare us and nobody encouraged us to have sex. And in eighth grade alone, the Bavarian curriculum schedules about 10 hours for sex education in biology class. Besides school, from what me and my friends in Munich experienced, most parents were also very open and supporting, and so was a lot of the media targeted towards kids and teens. There's this kids news show called Logo, uh, that I used to watch growing up and I remember that they sometimes address the topic of HIV and how condoms can protect you from it. For a lot of girls in my generation and previous generations, teen magazines also played a pretty big role and mainly the weekly magazine Bravo that my friends and I started to read when we were like 12 or 13. Besides stories on celebrities and fashion etc, Bravo always had a few sex related pages as well. The category was called Dr. Sommer and contained two parts. One part was a page with a picture of a naked teenage guy and a naked teenage girl. These people volunteered to be in the magazine and there would be some information about their hobbies and what they liked and disliked about their bodies. This was always the most scandalous part of the whole magazine and of course nobody would admit that they had looked at it and it may even sound like crossing a border now that I'm explaining this, but looking back I actually have to say that I feel like it helped a lot to show kids that not all genitalia and bodies look the same and that that's okay and normal. The other part was actually about sex related questions that the readers had sent in and that the Dr. Zoma team answered. There were questions like, I have trouble using a tampon, how can I get birth control, does my penis have a normal size, um, I'm 15 and my boyfriend wants to have sex with me but I'm not sure if I'm ready yet or even can I get pregnant from kissing, those kind of questions. Just all kinds of sex related questions that teens could possibly have in that phase and the answers almost always started with something along the lines of don't do anything you're not ready for, it's important to talk about things with your partner and it's not a competition. They would also say things like you can try different things before actually having sex but make sure to only only do things you enjoy and use protection and tell your partner if you don't want to do something. That magazine has definitely taken on a huge role regarding sex education in Germany in the past few decades and it also represents the overall tone in our country when it comes to that topic. Nobody ever told me or my friends that sex was something bad. Instead we were taught that it's a natural part of life and in my experience that didn't lead to anyone walking out of sex education class and be like, I need to try this right away. On the contrary, I personally feel like since we knew what to expect and that it's going to happen anyway at some point, there was no need for people to rush into it or try it out of curiosity. And once people started dating in like 10th, 11th or 12th grade, it was actually pretty normal that kids were allowed to stay the night at their girlfriend's or their boyfriend's place. Of course, all parents handle that differently, but I feel like overall the communication between parents and kids regarding that topic is pretty mature in Germany and I think I only know of one friend whose parents didn't allow that. Now when it comes to sex education in school, some of my friends in the US have actually made fairly similar experiences to what I just described, especially the ones who went to inner city schools but a lot of Americans make very different experiences. Of course, things vary from state to state, from school to school, from family to family, but sex education is not mandatory by federal law in the US and only 29 states have made it mandatory and even in those states, there's no unified curriculum on the topic. Only 17 states require it to be medically accurate and the statistics as well as the number of friends who have told me disturbing stories actually shock me. Sexual education in the US is taught in two main forms. Comprehensive sex education, which is pretty much what I just described from my experiences in Germany, and abstinence only, 
which to a lot of Europeans will probably sound really outdated. But a lot of students in the US are actually taught that the only way of having safe sex is having no sex at all and that they need to wait until marriage to have sex. And in the course of that, a lot of schools hardly educate their students on protection and birth control or don't educate them on that at all. I'm going to provide some numbers for you guys in a second, but first, here's what some of my American friends have told me about their personal experiences. I am from Memphis, so the South, and family is very religious, so not liberal or like open to talk about things. My middle school, I really don't remember having like a class, a specific class on like telling us about sex ed at all those like don't have sex for marriage. It's just like known. It's like the silent known. Like don't bring it up. You don't do it. Um, it's a sin. Bad. Just like slap on the hand. Like that's how it has always been. Do you remember having sex education in high school at all? Honestly, no. Like I, we, I don't think that we had a class that talked about it and if there was and I wasn't in it I knew like what a condom was from just like movies and um like how to use one but like I I didn't have sex in like middle school or like early high school so I never like experienced anything with it so it was more like my friends experimenting and then telling me about it it was more research and then friends telling me it was never through like a parent or a teacher or even a pediatrician my pediatrician was very don't do that you're too young, wait until you're older and in love and married. I didn't talk to my mom about birth control until uh, college. And it was my freshman year and I told her I had bad cramps and that my periods were irregular and I needed something to help that. Meanwhile, I had a boyfriend and was being intimate with him and I wanted to just like have protection and not have to worry about anything. High school, clearly people, I mean, I sort of have my boyfriend, so like, things would be talked about between me and the boyfriend. I, I never talked to my mom about it. I mean, my mother never said, hey, while you're seeing so-and-so, like, make sure dot, dot, dot. Like, that was never talked about. I s still don't talk about it. And I've had, like, serious relationships. I've lived with people, and they had no idea. I have um, been intimate, and they... I feel like they know, but they just don't talk about it, you know? Or maybe they don't. Maybe they're just so glazed over. When it comes to people like staying over, I never had a boyfriend stay over in high school. With boyfriends, it was like someone always had to be home. So like a parent had to be home at his place, at my place. Doors were not shut. Yeah, I was always downstairs. If we were in my room for some reason, the door had to be like open all the way. In college, I had my boyfriend stay over my freshman year. He slept in a different bedroom than I did. We weren't allowed to like be in the same room with the door closed. We would be like in my room on the bed, like watching a movie or something. And she like called me over and said, you know, that's why are you doing that? You're setting a bad example for your, for your siblings, which was weird. Cause it was like, it, it was so casual for us to do it in college. And then to come home, you, you like forget how shut off things are. I wish there was just like more open communication in schools and with parents and like maybe if parents are unsure of like how to talk to their kids like they need to be educated in how to talk to their kids you know I think that's one thing that I want to do when I do have children is like yes I'm a Christian and I believe that God loves me and I'm going to follow these steps but also know that if you have sex before marriage it's not the end of the world and I'd much rather you do it protected and safe and be able to tell me than like go about what I've done, which is like have to live like a secret life almost of like what I do and don't do. They had a pregnancy class for the girls who were pregnant um, because there was like probably six of them, maybe. In your high school? In my high school, yes. Two in my grade and then probably some in upper class that I would see because obviously because of their belly. So in middle school, no, they did not talk about plan B or birth control. In high school, the teachers, no. We had like a life skills class and they never, I mean, they kind of touched on it, but they didn't, they didn't really go much detail into it or just there weren't really a lot of sex education available at my high school. So you just had to hear from people, word of mouth. 
And I didn't really know what it was till probably junior year of high school. In the high school, they kind of were just like, yeah, keep waiting until marriage. And I was just like, I don't really want to do that. I mean, that's for some people, but personally started to date some girls and gotten like serious relationships or something that's like, you want to have sex or, and you don't know what to do. I was fortunate enough to have my parents and things like that, but a lot of kids aren't and don't know what they're doing. Um, or have unprotected sex, unsafe sex. They were almost like, don't make physical contact with a girl. Don't kiss, don't do that. They're just like, you'll get uh, diseases from doing anything physical really, like orally or like just having sex. And I was just like, okay. And then in high school, as I started dating and I'm just like, dad, am I allowed to like kiss a girl or anything like that? He's like, yeah. And then he like gave me the talk and stuff. And I was just like, oh so they were completely wrong what they taught me and like he's just like make sure you use a condom and everything like that and that's kind of the overall view of what i remember that was a while ago but yeah it was it was for me it was not great because it was a catholic school we were taught abstinence only i don't remember what grade it started in i do think they kind of like brought it up from time to time but it wasn't really like discussed with us until i believe like ninth grade that's kind of when i remember like explicitly like sex ed being a thing and when they taught it like i said it was absence only there was no discussion of birth control no discussion of condoms or no there was but it was like how condoms weren't as effective as people claim they are um how you can still get stds how um you know like the consequences of like unintended pregnancy there was no discussion of abortion unless it was of course like how it will ruin your life but the thing that they talked about the most is how like basically regardless of like whether or not you're like safe in terms of like using condoms using birth control anything like that they talked a lot about how like if you have sex outside of marriage then basically like you um lose the ability to like properly bond with people every time you like have sex with somebody so basically they were saying like the more you have sex with different people when you finally meet like the one you're just like a hollow husk of a person who like can't bond the way that you used to and that you just like you won't be able to have like a good marriage so there was a lot of kind of like fear in it and just no discussion of like if you do want to have sex, this is how you can be safe, or like, you know, like if this happens to you, this is where you can go, or anything like that. It was very much just like, no, you will not have sex outside of marriage, and if you do, then your life will be ruined. What people say is that you, someone will like, the teacher will like give a cookie to a student and be like, take a bite out of that, and then they will, and then they'll take it to another student and they'll be like, do you want to take a bite of this? And of course they'll say no, because someone else took a bite of it. And then they'll be like, that's what happens when you have sex. I do think something that happened once though at my school was um, someone took like a piece of tape and they like put it on their skin and then they took it off and they're like, and then try to put it on again. And they're like, see, every time you have sex with somebody, like see how the tape like doesn't stick as well. That's what happens when you have sex outside of marriage in terms of like how you have relationships. like you'll just lose the ability to like have real relationships. I know one thing that happens a lot in schools, if private or public, is um, in order to like keep kids from like having sex, they'll show them pictures of like STDs in the really far advanced stages. This actually happened at my high school. Um, we were shown pictures of like the clap or which is like syphilis, I think it's like syphilis and like the very, very, yeah, so like scare, a lot of scare tactics. We would literally look at pictures of like disease genitalia. So I went to high school in Ohio. And so I went to a public school. I went to um, Lakota West. And there we did have like a more comprehensive sex ed. It still emphasized abstinence above everything else. But they did say like, this is a condom. This is birth control. These are the different types of birth control. This is how you use a condom. So that was much better. But they also glossed over abortion where they were just like, also abortion is a thing. Not even that's an option, just like it's a thing. And then they like glossed over it. There was also nothing about like how if you are gay or if you're a lesbian, like how you can be safe. Um, we did talk about consent, which was good. Um, we had some representatives from a um, Ohio-based women's shelter come in and talk about that. But then we also had um, some representatives come in from some kind of like, I don't even know what it was, but it was these two guys and they were really nice. They said that men are protectors and women are treasures and that was a little weird. <laughs> this is in a, a public school too. You know, my parents had like discussed it with me like very briefly. We kind of had a like, you know, sex talk, whatever. But again, it was just like, 
men and women do this when they're adults and someday you will. <laughs> that was pretty much like all the sex ed that I had. I was lucky in that like I did, I was able to learn about it through like other ways, like through the internet and stuff. Um, so that was cool. But like, had I not had that as a resource, like I probably wouldn't know as much as I do now as an adult. So obviously I'm in the Midwest and these were just a few experiences. But from all the people that I talked to about this topic, the vast majority of all stories I heard were very similar to those and the statistics confirm that too. So when sex ed is taught at all, 39 states require abstinence to be a part of it, while only 20 states require birth control to be a part of it. According to data from the National Survey of Family Growth on teenagers aged 15 to 19 in the United States who have received some kind of formal sex education, only 60% of them have received education on birth control. About 80% of them have been told to say no to sex, so there's some kind of overlap between the two groups. But the number that actually shocks me is that about 30% of them have been told to say no to sex and at the same time have not gotten any formal education on birth control. At the time of their first intercourse, only about half of them has received formal instruction on contraception. And most shockingly, because this isn't only about contraception, but also about protection from STDs, only about half of them has been taught how to use a condom. The numbers on instruction that those teenagers have received from parents are about the same or lower. So in the end, 21% of females and 35% of males did not receive instruction on methods of birth control from either a formal source or a parent. Okay, that was a lot of numbers, but what actually counts is the outcome, right? Well, according to research, and I'll put the links to several statistics on this in the info box below, abstinence-only sex education is not effective when it comes to preventing unwanted teen pregnancy or the spread of STDs. In fact, it seems to have no effect on the spread of STDs, while it actually seems to raise the number of unwanted teen pregnancies. The United Nations has published statistics that say that in 2005 to 2010, out of 1,000 teenage women aged 15 to 19, there were 7.9 of them pregnant in Germany, while there were 41.2 pregnant in the United States. This includes pregnancies ending in life birth, abortion, and pregnancy loss, while the abortion rate for teenage pregnancies is slightly higher in the United States. Regarding the spread of STDs among teenagers, I actually couldn't find any comparable statistics for the two countries, but if you find any, feel free to link them in the comments below. Now to slowly wrap this up, I'd like to say that I absolutely understand that many religious beliefs don't comply with having sex before marriage and that's absolutely justified. But in my personal opinion, there's a difference between your personal beliefs and decisions on the one hand and receiving factual information on the other hand. I think that teenagers should know what STDs exist, how they can protect themselves from them and what they can do when they get them. They should also know what kinds of contraceptions exist, how they function, how they can get them and how a pregnancy works. None of that forces anyone to actually have sex and from my personal experience, knowing all of that doesn't exactly make sex more tempting. It makes it clear to teenagers that sex isn't just fun, but also responsibility. And if you're religious, it's your decision whether you want to have sex before marriage or not. But if you do end up doing it, you should at least have the knowledge to do it in a safe way and act responsible. That's my opinion. Of course, abstinence is the only way to be 100% protected and that should be mentioned, but abstinence only, while it can absolutely be part of a religion class, in my opinion, does not belong in a biology or a health class. I also find it interesting that even though in Germany, state and church are actually connected, while in the US, there is a separation of state and church, sex education in the US is heavily influenced by religious beliefs and thereby mainly Christian beliefs, while in Germany, Religion doesn't play a role in that at all. You'd kind of expect it to be the other way around, but I'm actually pretty sure that if a German teacher just decided to teach abstinence until marriage instead of comprehensive sex education, they would get in big trouble with the school and the parents. So obviously there are still a lot of topics that can be discussed regarding sex education in both countries, like gender roles, LGBTQ, the parents' roles, etc. But that would be way too much for this video. 
So I hope this was informative for you guys. And as I said, I'd love to see a civilized discussion in the comments below. And for all the statistics that I mentioned and for more related videos and articles, check out the info box below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you like what I'm doing. Follow me on Instagram and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!